Hey, a friend, Chris Van Viver here from whylogicprorules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Today in our 30-day series, we need to examine arrangement markers and subsequently markers themselves. But arrangement markers are these amazing tools that allow you to rearrange your projects as you see fit. And any regions that lie beneath the arrangement markers, they just travel right with those arrangement markers. It's amazing. So you can put your chorus in front of your verse to test it out or move the verse to the end of the song if you wanted. And you can just try out all sorts of arrangements and everything in your project moves around to accommodate. It's so cool. So we're gonna dig into arrangement markers, but we're also going to dig into why you would use markers, which are just a simple tool for navigation and knowing where you are in a project as opposed to the arrangement markers because this is a question that I get fairly frequently. So first I have an old demo here and it's from 2018. You know, we began it and then I don't know, we moved on with life and hopefully we'll reconvene to finish the songs and album that we started. But my friend Ben and I have a handful of demos and they're really basic. It's beats, it's some synths, vocals, scratch vocals, nothing is set in stone. But I thought this would be a great way to show off arrangement markers because we have an arrangement that's not finished. So let's take a listen to some of these parts just so we can get acquainted with what's going on. We'll take a listen to a verse and then a chorus and maybe like the bridge or outro. Let's take a quick listen. Never knock, there's a trait to the lock Severing the cerebellum above the caliber And the of our vitals and our feelings Use the light from the bugger door And this yellow and orange Stuck in the Porsche and away And the clicks and creaks in the doors Banshees caress, of course Skeleton Cool, and then we got a chorus You know, what we deem the chorus Nice hoops coming in No question, it's a summon Shifts, ponder this if you turn on your cauldron drip Style for your apparitions Oops. Cool, and then we'll take a listen to, I don't know, the bridge Daps from the unknown on the other side While the wall is undivided Designed and poltergeist Should the voices perished in the threshold Just hush Cool, we have an idea of what's going on here so we have all these different parts and what's the best arrangement for these parts? And that's where arrangement markers come in. Now, the way that you create arrangement markers is that we need to dig into the global track lanes and you can use key command G or this button right here, which allows us to access the different global track lanes. We have arrangement markers and we also have markers, signature and tempo. But if you don't see arrangement markers, you can just right click and we have a drop down of the different global track lanes that we can introduce to this project. So we have beat mapping, transposition, movie, and therefore you just enable whichever global track lanes you need for your project. After that, it's all about populating your project with the arrangement markers that you need. We have a plus button here that adds an arrangement marker and every time you click on it, you add a new arrangement marker. And just like that, you can very quickly stack your project with arrangement markers and then you can start moving things around. You can see over here that I have arrangements set to suspended. And this is important. If you click on the arrangement marker field, we have this option to suspend the content connection. And what this means is, is if I decide to rearrange the different markers while I'm setting up the arrangement markers, I'm not gonna accidentally rearrange everything in the project. And once you have your markers in place, we disable suspension. And now if I move this verse anywhere in the song, check it out, you just, Click and drag the marker, and we'll place it right here. And we've now rearranged everything that was below that marker. So everything in that intro verse has now been moved after what we deem the chorus. And from there, the world is really your oyster in terms of arranging your productions. We can rearrange anything to anywhere, and the regions beneath follow suit. It's important to point out that arrangement markers rely on other arrangement markers for placement. You're not gonna get a gap between any of these markers and we can't move like the outro here way down the empty section of the project. There has to be an arrangement marker after the outro marker for us to be able to rearrange it. So let's give it a try. So we introduce a second marker, take this, move it, boom. Now we can rearrange the outro, but we had to have a marker in place. And you can also see that there are names attached to each arrangement marker. If we click on one of these markers, we have the option of either the intro, the verse, the chorus, bridge, outro, or you can rename any marker as you see fit. So if I double click on this marker, I can just call this awesome marker. Cool, we can add our own names, but the typical song has a verse, has a chorus, has an outro. 
Arrangement markers are amazing for rearranging songs, but we do have to be careful in the fact that all of these regions are tied to those arrangement markers. That's why we have the suspend content connection. For example, if I delete this awesome marker here, so let's just move everything. Let's select this marker, hit delete, and now we're deleting the content underneath. And if I decide to get rid of all the markers, let's give it a try. Let's try to select each one and hit delete. See, we're deleting the content as opposed to just the markers. But if we go here, left click, spend content connection, and now delete the markers, we can now delete the markers without killing all of the content in our project. And if we start introducing markers again, let's give it a try. Let's add one, chorus, bridge, outro. Cool. This is what Arrangement Markers brings to the table. It allows you to rearrange your productions and everything just follows suit so you're not having to move one region at a time all over the project. You know, oh, I want the chorus to be in between these. So I need to take these and move them and then move the chorus content, you know, after this. And then you got to rearrange your markers. And you can see the arrangement markers do not follow the regions. If we even turn off the function to suspend content connection, let's take these regions here and just bring them down here. And none of the arrangement markers follow along. Now, a question I get a lot is, Chris, why do you use markers instead of the arrangement markers? Because obviously the arrangement markers are of higher value, right? It allows us to rearrange our songs. But I would say that the markers are just as valuable as arrangement markers, and here's why. If we close the global track lanes, we can't see any of the markers that we've created. And thus, that kind of ruins part of the job of a marker to let us know where we are in our project, which means we would have to keep the global track lanes open all the time so we know where we are. And sometimes that's just real estate that you don't want taken up. That's where markers come in. And markers function exactly the same way. You press this plus button, introduce a marker, and the marker is introduced based on where the playhead is. And the markers just have generic names, marker one, two, so on and so forth. So you can rename the marker, so we'll call this intro. And you can move a marker anywhere you want. So you can move it down here and it doesn't matter if there's a marker before or after it. And we can also hold command to adjust the length of a marker. Even though the end of this marker, who knows where it is? If I hold command, we get this bracket. If I click here, now it's the length of what I need it to be. And you go so on and so forth. So if we place the playhead here, plus symbol, boom, now we've got another marker. But what I like to do is, is use the key command option apostrophe to drop markers as I'm listening to a project. So I'll start from the beginning, hit play, and just use option apostrophe to drop markers in as we move along the project. So imagine it's playing through and we're just dropping in markers. And then you can rename them as you need. And the value of the classic marker over the arrangement marker is when we close the global track lanes, if I hit key command G, we can see our markers. And we don't have to have all of this real estate taken up by global track lanes. But let me show you one step better. Instead of you having to create arrangement markers and then another series of markers, they gotta rename and you know adjust the length and all that. Let's delete these markers, go to marker, left click on it, and you have three options, either to create markers from regions, create markers from arrangement markers, or convert existing markers to arrangement markers. Check it out. We're gonna create from arrangement markers. And just like that, you have markers that are exactly the same length, the same name, the same color as the arrangement markers. Close them down. You can see your markers, no problem. And this is the easiest and fastest way, but perhaps you created markers and now you want to create arrangement markers. Well, check it out. Let's take one step before we do that. I'm going to select a handful of regions here. Left click on marker. Create markers from regions. Okay, so now we have three different markers for the three different regions I selected. And now let's left click again and convert to arrangement markers. Oh yeah. And as you can see, arrangement markers, there can be no space in between them. So they're going to connect. They're going to take up that empty space. But just like that, you have the tools you need to navigate your project, to rearrange your songs and productions, to get the best production possible. And that's why we use both classic markers and arrangement markers. So I hope that was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly suggest subscribing to the YouTube channel, YLogic Pro Rules or subscribing on the website itself, ylogicprorules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, new emails, and posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much, and I'll see you tomorrow.